Okay, so let's start. Okay, so, uh, can you come here? Can I fix the quiz? Okay, so uh, today, inshallah, I'm going to start the chapter seven. So this chapter is about network layer uh, and for sure network layer uh, routing, routing protocols as well. So, so first of all here, this part I already explained in the introduction, I want to make I want to make a very quick revision about what, what this layer is doing, uh, what protocols were on this layer, and so on, okay? So the first thing you can see here, if you have two computers, A and B, and you have two routers in the middle here, you can you can see from this figure, we don't need all layers in the in the routers here. We don't need we don't need all layers, okay? Some layers, as I explained in the introduction, we call them end to end. So like application, like transport layers, it's just from source to destination, end to end, okay? But so here, as I told you, in let, let's agree in some terms, as, as I explained in chapter one, uh, we have here, when I say end to end, I mean from here to here, from source, destination. This is source and destination, okay? End to end. By the way, this command can be source if it is bi-directional communication, whatever. You want to take the quiz or? So, but some layers, it has to be a hub by hub. Also, you have to know this term when I say end to end, from end to end, or hub, hub by hub, okay? So here in every hub, you can see we have like physical layer, we have data link layer, also we have network layer. So what you see, should see here, data link layer we already explained in the previous chapter, uh, uh, network layer here, it's it's, all, it's also this layer or these protocols, the protocols I'm going to explain these layers is, are, should, be, should be hub by hub, okay? Uh, or it, it should be should be, should be be executed in every, in the routers and also in the end, end nodes. So that's, a, that's what I want to say, okay? So also, if you, if you see this, uh, this figure, as I explained here, this is this is uh, layer layer number four, okay. Layer number four. This is transport layer, okay. This is one of the most important layers, by the way. Unfortunately, I don't know why they don't put in the uh, syllabus here, but this is very important layer for sure. Uh, so, but anyway, so here this is the third layer. The uh, here is the uh, the data at the third layer. We call we call the data gram. We have brains and layers, we put it three and signals, okay? Just just names, but uh, so what, as you see here in the uh, encapsulation and decapsulation, as I explained to you before, uh, this one here, uh, we're gonna focus on layer number three. As you see here, layer number three should receive segment, segment from, uh, from, from layer number four, from the transport layer, and then it has to encapsulate it has to encapsulate this, this segment into what we call data gram. Uh, same here is going to do the opposite of the de decapsulation. Um, okay, so now let's talk about what uh, this layer. This layer is actually resp responsible for routing, how to route. Okay, uh, you will understand exactly what I mean now, but the main responsibility of, of layer number three network layer is actually how can we make routing decisions, routing decisions. So what do you mean by routing, routing decision? Okay, first of all, in layer number two, we don't have a routing problem, why? Because the two computers are in the same network. So either we share the air, okay, or we, we, we have a direct cable, or we share we share a bus. So in all cases, I can communicate directly. I'm gonna I can communicate directly with the next node. Okay. This is in the second layer. 
But layer number three, there is no, if for sure, it's it's uh, it's not it's not always the case. It may be it, it, it may be I want to communicate with, with my next neighbor, but not, it's not always the case. The two I, the two nodes cannot cannot communicate directly. That's why, for example, here we have here this, this computer here want to communicate with this computer. Okay, so there is no direct link between them. Okay, so in this case. I need what we call routing. So what do you mean by routing? Routing means if I want to transfer some data from here to here, okay? First of all, it has to it has to come to this router. First of all, as, as I explained to you before, there are two cases, okay? Either the destination with me in the same network, okay? Because as I told you before, the way we have in the internet, the way you have the internet, we call it network of networks, network of networks. You are done? We call it ne network, network of networks. Why? Because as you see here, we have different ne 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 networks and in this, in this shuttle, you understand this concept better. So we have different networks and then we can connect these networks together, okay? So if there is another computer here in this network, they can communicate directly. Uh, but if the if the destination in a different network, as I told you before, I have to send I have to send it to the router, okay? And then this so we use here routers to connect the networks together. You got what I'm saying? So any computer here in this network, they can communicate directly. Any computer here, they can communicate directly. Any computer here can communicate directly. To connect these networks together, as we see here, we use routers, okay? And if, as you see. Every router has actually addresses here and also addresses here. So actually, it belongs to both both of them. Okay. So let let me return to my point. What do you mean by routing? Routing means if I want to send the data from here to here. Okay. So I have to send it to this router, and then this router has to make routing has to make a decision because as we see here in a very simple example, this router has to output output from here and output from here. Okay, mm -hmm. so the question is that after I receive this message, should I want to get it delivered here? Should I send it from here or should I send it from here, from this output? So the router has several outputs, okay? So if I want to, after I receive data from the sender here and I want to I wanna get it delivered to here, the router has to make routing decision, okay? routing decision so that this data has to be delivered to here. For sure, if I send this data this way, it may not never, it, it, it may never be uh, be delivered, okay? That's why the router has ha, has to be aware of where, where it has to send. Same thing when I sent it here, this router also has to make a decision uh, to deliver this data, should it come here or have to transmit it this way and so on, okay? So that's what I mean by routing decision. So this is the responsibility of, of this is the main responsibility of layer layer number three. How to make this routing decisions? Okay. Uh, be, uh, so so to, very important thing here. Everything I'm gonna explain here in, in this chapter is actually uh, uh, bet, between different um, uh, between different ne 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 networks because this is layer number three. Okay. So the two computers are not are not in the same network. Uh, so how how can we get get message delivered when you transmit data to a different network? Okay. Uh, so here, yeah, that's what I'm explaining here. And so uh, here, here, layer number two is responsible to 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 deliver data from one hub, one only one hub. So from here to here, it's one hub. So this is layer number two, hub, hub by hub delivery is layer number two, data link layer, okay? From here, from here to here, it's it's called, we call it one hub, okay? So uh, this is also layer number two, from here to here, it is layer number two. So every hub, it's layer number two. Layer number three is responsible to transfer data from end to end. So from one computer to another computer. So sort of this niche, okay? So this is the responsibility of layer number, uh, number uh, three from one computer to another, to another computer, okay? There is something also, it's not related, but it's, it's, I'm not gonna teach a transport layer, also again, it's a very important layer, but also there is something important here. Uh, layer number three, it's only transmit from one computer to another computer, okay? 
This is layer number number three. Layer number four, the transport layer, inside this computer, maybe I have different programs. Okay, we, we call them process. So we have different uh, uh, pro processes or programs. Same thing here we have, for, for example, you have different program. So for example, here we have a program A, wanna communicate to program A here, or they are communicating together. You have a program B communicating to program B, okay, or application B, or, or process communicating to a process. So who's gonna do that? Who, who's gonna transfer data between one program to another program? This is layer number four, okay? What happens, that's why you will see in this chapter, in this layer, layer number three, we are, we are not going to use the port address, okay, or or the the address of the program. Only I need the computer address because I'm responsible to transmit data from computer to computer. When it goes to this computer, layer number four will understand where it has to go. It should go to application A or application B, application C, and so on. Okay, so this is, should be done by layer number four. So layer number four is responsible for. Uh, for for deliver for the, for the delivery of data from one program to one program or one process to process. Okay, so again you should understand the the, the comparison here. We have delivery hub to hub. You should understand what it means. You have a end to end or source to destination delivery. Also we have program to program or process to process. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, so that's why I told you. Only in this layer, only I care about the delivery of, of the data to the computer. When it, when it goes to the computer, layer number four will decide, okay? It should go to this application or that application and so on. Any questions? Okay. One also of the things I explained to before is about, um, is about addressing, addresses. Why you, Address it, uh, why you use ad, 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 uh, uh, why we use addresses, different types of addresses. Ad addresses actually is unique identifier. It's like your name, okay? There is no two person have exactly same name or like uh, uh, some um, uh, in United States we have social security number. It's not like, it's like national, it is used for Texas, but it is uh, like national ID. There are no, no two, there are no two persons have the same social security number, okay? So identifier for each person, okay? So we need something like that when a, when a, in, in network, okay? So uh, when when a computer wanna transmit data to another computer, we, there are several computers. So it's a computer, the destination has to be known, okay? So that's why we need unique identifier. And as I told you here, as I told you in the introduction, we have, we have three types of we have three types of identifiers, as I said before. In layer, in layer number two, we have what we call MAC addresses, okay? And these MAC addresses are used inside, inside the same network, okay? So we have to make sure inside the same network, every computer has a different MAC address, okay? Because this is the identifier for in, inside the network, okay? Also, here, we need, we need another identifier here. That's what we uh, hear. Uh, this is the IP addresses, okay? And in this chapter, in, in, in chapter one, I give you like very simple idea. Well, I told you the MAC address is flat. IP address is high, uh, it has high hierarchy, right? And I just, to understand it better, I told you this is like your home address. It has a street, it has a country, it has... Uh, uh, city and so on, okay? So it has this kind of hi hierarchy, okay? But in this chapter, I'm gonna give you more details about this idea and why it has to be a hierarchy, but Mac is flat, okay? Uh, when you understand what hierarchy means, you will better understand what I mean by flat, but anyway. So, so when, but here, you know, the IB are uh, identifier and they have to be globally unique because this one is used globally, okay? used between different networks. So there should be identifiers that globally unique, okay? Or it should be it should be unique over the whole, the different networks who are connecting together, okay? Also, uh, we have something we call the port, the port number, okay? Or the port address, whatever you wanna call it. So this is for every application in, in computer, as I told you, you can run multiple programs, or different programs. Maybe this program you want to talk to this program, exchange data with this program. So when the back, when the message or the bucket comes here, I have to know how I can know this this message has to go to this program from what we call the port address. So the port address it has to be it's number one. I use it for the different process processes I have. 
okay also it has to be unique inside unique here so is there is there are no two programs have the same or two uh, uh, processes uh, processes have the, have the same uh, uh, portal number is that okay okay now let's come to uh, how how routing and for sure in this chapter you will get more details i told you when i transmit when i transmit um, um, uh, when i transmit a message to this router the router should be able to know to get this message delivered to this guy it has to go this way it shouldn't go this way otherwise it will never be delivered it has to go this way the router has to be has to know that okay how the router how the router knows that this is what happens in this layer using what we call routing protocols so we need to run some protocols so that the router can know that can know when i receive this packet with this address it has to it has i have to transmit it this way not that way okay so actually what happens exactly number one in this chapter i'm going to explain in details routing protocols okay so after we run the routing protocols, we are going to have here what we call routing table. So this table is the result of routing protocols. You have to run the routing protocol to create routing table. So here, this router has a routing table. Okay, what happens when I receive the message, I'm going to look at the destination. The destination is computer P, computer B here. Okay. So here, I just use the letters A, B, T, F for IP and use numbers for MAC. Just... So just for explanation, in reality, both of them, both of them are numbers. Okay. Just so here, what happens after I receive a message, I'm gonna look at my table. I see it should it should be written in my table. If you wanna, if if you have a message for computer B, it has to it has to go this way. Okay. All the computers here in this area, or, or in, in uh, all the computers that I I can I can reach all these computers using this album. Okay. All of them should be. That somehow it's a routing table. If, so that if you receive any message for any computer here, I'm going to look at the routing table. The routing table is, is going to tell me it has to go this way. Is that okay? So the routing table is actually the result of routing protocol. That's what I'm showing you here. So here, I'm uh, uh, for sure, in this chapter, I'm going to give you more details about that. Okay. So routing here, to, that means we need to determine source destination route taken by bucket. What route it takes, okay? We have here routing, what we call, we have, you have to run routing algorithm. After you run the routing algorithm, we have, we have what we call routing table. This table is stored in, in the routers here. So that after you receive a bucket, after you receive a, a, a bucket or segment, whatever you wanna call it. So after I receive it, I'm gonna look at the destination. And then based on the table, the table is gonna tell me it has to go this way, or it has to go this way, or this way to get it, to get it delivered. Is that okay? Any questions? So as you will see here, so again, uh, the main uh, two, uh, the main, uh, the, the, there are two main things here for network here. Number one, I'm gonna explain them in details. Number one, addressing. I'm gonna give you more details about IB addresses, how they are a hierarchy and so on. Uh, the second thing here is actually routing. How, how can you make routing tables? For routing tables, you should understand Okay, so there is, it's a program, it's a list. So I have to run the program. After I run the program, I'm gonna create every, every router is gonna have a routing table. Is that okay? But the question is, that should, only, should I create this routing table only one time and that's it? The answer is no, I have to keep updating it because maybe one router is gonna fail. Maybe the network is gonna change. So it's not only one time, it has to also, I have to create it and also, also I have to, uh, I have to maintain it or I have to update it all the time. Okay. Uh, so here, I explained this one in chapter uh, in, cha in chapter one, but I'm going to repeat it here again. Uh, so, for example, here we assume again uh, these letters. I'm going to use the letters for IB addresses. I'm going to use numbers for the MAC addresses. So here, um, this computer, every computer has an IB address and also it has a MAC address. So this is the MAC address here, for example, number 10, uh, IB address is A. Here, uh, IB is P, uh, uh, 95 is, is um, MAC address. Is that okay? So I wanna, so as you see here, the network layer is gonna say, this is computer A, you wanna talk to computer P. So this IB addresses should be, should be in, in, in the data graphs. 
should be inside the data graphs, okay? Because this is for this layer. No one else can read it or because this is for, should be written by this layer, okay? So this later layer is gonna say, I'm computer A, I wanna talk to computer B, okay? And then the second layer uh, is gonna, uh, here in this case, as I told you uh, before, what happens is that uh, every, every computer, every router, I should know, I should know, if this after after you send this one to the second layer, the second layer is going to book, look at the destination. The destination is P. If 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 the destination is one of the computers here in my network, so I should know. Yes, you should know. There is a protocol for that. Thing. Okay. So the second layer, if 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 P if P is one of the of my neighbors here, so I'm going to get it delivered directly, and then we are done. Okay. How can you do that? I'm going to hear in the MAC address. I'm going to put the MAC address of the computer if it is my neighbor, if, if one of the computers in my network. So I'm going to get it delivered directly, okay? But in this case, this is not the case. So computer P is not in this network. In this case, okay, uh, so I'm going to forward to the router. The router is going to take care of it. It's not my responsibility, okay? As you see here, the router is going to connect to computers together. And this, this is exactly what happened. Well, exactly what happened here because uh, computer B is not my neighbor so here i'm going to forward it to i'm going to forward it to the router so the router is actually the mac address is 20 so here i'm going to so mac mac number 10 is talking to mac number 20 so that means this message is going to go to the router okay when it comes to the router okay when this one comes to the router here uh, same thing if if computer b is already one of the computers here I'm gonna I'm gonna put the Mac of com of computer B to get it delivered, okay, directly, okay. But this is not the case. This is not the case. Computer B is not here because it's not here, okay. I'm gonna forward to this router. There may be another router here. There may be another. There is another network here, and we have another router here. And this is the routing. The routing protocol is gonna tell me should I transmit this one to this router or should I transmit to this router, okay? But anyway, so because it's not in this network, I'm going to transmit to this router. That's why what I did here, I changed the Mac. I'm going to say here, this is this is Mac number 99. When I sent this one to Mac number 33, this is Mac number 33, to get it delivered from here to here. Is that okay? Here, this is a final step. In the final step, already computer B is one, if one, is one, one of the members in this network. So the router already knows that. So what, what this router is gonna do here in, in the second layer is the sec, what, the, what the second layer is gonna do is, is to get it delivered directly, okay? Uh, so here I'm gonna say this is router number 66 is communicating with 95. So it's gonna go to 95. Any questions? So if you look here, you can see uh, the IP address does not change. The IP address is fixed. What we change in every hub, Okay, is actually the MAC. Yeah. Um, so here there is one term we use, I already somehow explained it, but there is one term we, we call it internet working. Okay, so what this term means in internet working, as I told you what happens, you have here different networks. So for example, Qatar University as a whole can be one network. Look here inside, inside this network, there may be another networks. You got what I'm saying? So, so here, this, and then this one network, one network, one network, and then I wanna, internet working means I wanna glow, you know glow? When you glow something, glow. I wanna glow these networks together. I wanna connect them together so that they look at, they look at, they look as if they are only one network. Any computer can communicate with, with any other computer. And we do that using a router. So we put here routers and also we were using layer number three, okay? So here, internet working here means we have different networks. Uh, maybe they have different technology and making them look like it's it's just for the upper layer, like one network. Uh, all here transparent interconnection across different networks on a global scale or building a single network, okay, seamless. You know the word seamless? Seamless means it's you are, 
you you don't know the details. You don't know if this network is using different technology of this of of this or computer is. Uh, you don't need to know all of that. Just 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 the computer can communicate with the computer. Okay, at the upper layers, just computer is communicating to other other computer, and then uh, you you don't need to know uh, the if uh, uh, any any details. Okay, so here for example, so here we do that using routers and gateways to connect these networks together. Anyway. So that's why we call, we call the internet is actually network of networks. Network of networks. Okay. Any questions? So for example, here, Qatar University itself, it can be like, uh, here it can be represented like only one network. If you want, if, if Qatar, if any, any computer inside Qatar University want to communicate with any other computers in out, uh, in outside the university, uh, there are routers that is needed to connect this network to outside the networks, okay? But without these routers, here's a computer seen inside the university, they can communicate together. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so here, so what I'm what I'm gonna do in, in this chapter, one of uh, the for sure, uh, as I told you, there are two things I'm gonna do in this in this chapter because these are the two most important uh, things for, for layer number two. For sure, I'm gonna talk about routing protocols in much details, okay. How can we, how can we, uh, what kind of protocols we have? How can we do that? And also how can we create the routing tables and all of that, okay? Also, well, I'm gonna give you more details about the IP addresses, okay? because this is the two important things in, done in this layer. Addresses, how can, how can you do these addresses? I'm gonna give you too much details about these addresses and somehow it's very interesting. And uh, keep in mind the many challenges, that's what you should understand, what you should understand. The main challenge is, if you have a small network, okay, I can use a flat address. It's not a big deal, okay, because it's a small network. But if you have a huge network, so if you have billions of devices, these billions of devices want to communicate together. So scalability is going to be a big issue here. Scalability is going to be a big issue. How big is the routing table? Okay, that is why we will understand it better. That's why these IBs are high, high hierarchy. They did it in, in, in a high, 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 hierarchical way. You got what I'm saying? There is hierarchy here. As I, I give you one example, for example, if here, it's, it's like in, in the mailing, if you want to send a mail, if you want to send a letter, okay? If you want to send a letter, for example, I'm going to say anything that is good, go to another country, for example, like Kuwait or Saudi Arabia or any other country, anything here. So I'm here. I don't care about the details. I'm going to, I have the IP address. I'm going to look at the country. Oh, okay. The country is Saudi Arabia. So bring everything to Saudi Arabia. You have to go this way. You can see this word has high hierarchy. When it goes to Saudi Arabia, for example, or Kuwait or whatever, uh, now they are going to look at the details. Okay. So what is the city? So I'm going to go to the second level. That's why it has hierarchy, okay? Uh, because of that, I can I can handle the scalability issue. We are talking about billions of computers, okay? Uh, so here, my routing, my routing table doesn't need to have the details of every street in Saudi Arabia. It doesn't have the details of every uh, city in Saudi Arabia. I, do, I don't need all of that, you get what I'm saying? All that I need, I'm gonna look only country, okay? So everything, Saudi Arabia has to come here. You got this the details. I'm not gonna look at the second hierarchy. When it goes there, they're gonna start to go to the second hierarchy. They're gonna look at the city and so on. Same thing we we'll do it here. Otherwise, it's gonna be impossible. If it is flat, this is what you should understand. If the IB, if if the IBs are flat, it would be funny that the routing tables are gonna be very huge because you are gonna you are gonna write every single every single single address in the table. We don't do that. That's what that's why. Uh, the tables, uh, resist tables are is going to be small. They're not, they're not going to be huge because I'm not going to record every single, okay? Every single uh, IB. I'm going to only look at similar. You will understand the details in any way. So here I'm going to talk about number one, addresses, the hi hierarchical idea of addresses. Then I'm going to talk about routing tables, how they look like and how, uh, how these tables are going to be small in size because of this hi hierarchy we have. And then how can you get address assignment? How can you get these addresses? Because I, I made it very clear last time, as I told you, we have the MAC address, it's like your fingerprint. MAC address, is like your fingerprint. Every, the fingerprint of the computer is the MAC address. Okay, so when I, here, this laptop has, has a MAC address. When I go home, 
it's going to be the same MAC address. Okay? Because this MAC address is decided by the company that made the laptop. Same thing for iPhone or any other computer. You got what I'm saying? IB is different. When I come here, when I connected to the Qatar University network here, when I came here in the morning and my laptop was connected, so I'm going to ask the university, please give me IB. Right? So here, I, uh, when I go home, same thing, the laptop is going to connect to the network and ask them, please give me IB. Okay? So IB is more related to the location. That's why when some people do some kind of crimes, what the, usually the police or law, law enforcement people, they do, you send a message, you do some kind of any uh, crimes, you look at the IB, okay, to know your location, to know who, who, who sent this message. Because IB is related to, IB is related to the location, okay? So every time I go somewhere else, I have different IBs, okay? So how this is done, so that's what I'm gonna explain. Anyway, so let's start with the first one. Uh, first of all, you know, in the internet, the protocol we run in layer number three, we call it IB protocol, internet protocol, IB protocol. It's the same thing we, we, we say IB address, okay? You should, you should understand this IB protocol. Number one, it is unreliable. It's connection list, it's best effort. What this word is mean? So the protocol we use in layer number three, it's unreliable, connection list, and best effort. So what this means? Number one, unreliable means, unre unreliable means, it doesn't do any error connection, error correction, right? So what this one, I, I be, you give me a message, I'm gonna get this message delivered to here. Okay, the, I'm not gonna verify, I'm not gonna check the in, in, integr integrity of this message, okay? So I'm not, I'm not gonna, uh, this is unlike, I'm not gonna correct errors because this is not done in this layer, okay? Similar to what I explained, we have, we had error control in layer number two when I explained it about it, uh, if a frame, if a frame is lost, we, we are gonna retran, you do retransmission and so on, right? So this is, the, uh, this is uh, so, so this one, it doesn't, it's not gonna correct any error, it's not gonna detect error, it's on, just it's, it's gonna deliver it, okay? Because because this is actually, is gonna be done in the transport layer. So, so transport layer, it has error control, okay? So there is error control in the transport layer. So if I, so if, if layer number three deliver a message, so it's gonna send it to transport layer. Now the transport layer here is gonna detect, if, if for sure, if you use a protocol for that, because in transport layer, we have TCP and we have UDB. UDB does not correct errors, but uh, TCP, TCP is gonna detect and correct errors. So if you use that, so, so again, this is not done in this network, but it is done in the transport layer. Number two, connection list. What connection list means? Connection list means before you transmit data, you do need to create a connection. Similar when you dial a number, when you dial a phone number, before you talk, you actually create a connection first and then you send the data. We don't do that. We don't create a connection and then transmit data. No, just to give me the packets and then I, I will do my best to, to get these packets delivered. So, okay. So you don't need, you, you don't need, you don't need to contact the destination until the destin destination to create a connection. Okay. No, you just give me a message and I will try to uh, get them delivered. Okay. That's why you connection list, you don't create connection first. Before you, before you transmit, okay? And by the way, maybe the packets are gonna get, it's gonna be routed, uh, it's gonna take different routes. So when you transmit, uh, that's why one of the things that should be done in layer number uh, layer layer number four, the transport layer is uh, ordering, similar to what we did in uh, also, uh, uh, is or ordering of, 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 uh, of the back uh, segments, okay? So every segment is going to have a sequence number, okay? And maybe this is almost the same thing done in layer number two, but but don't be confused here because you because we have error control, flow control in layer number two, and the same thing for layer number four. It's not repeat. We don't repeat, by the way. It's, it's not it's not repeat. In, in layer layer number two, it's actually between computer and next one next one. But here, what we do here is end to end. From 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 the uh, source to destination. Okay. Uh, the last thing here, best effort. So, what do you mean by best effort? What this word mean? Best effort. Best effort means I don't guarantee. I don't guarantee the service. Okay. Why you don't guarantee the service? You remember if you again if you go to chapter one, I explained the packet switching. Okay. 
And uh, what's the name for the other one? I, have, I explain two types of switch. One is, huh? S a switch. Oh, circuit switching. So two things, bucket switching and circuit switching. I tell you the difference. Uh, uh, the main difference is that in circuit switching, you have a cable. So you have resources between the source and destination. So I give you bandwidth. You have a reserved with bandwidth. Is that okay? But here, here you we don't you don't have anything. You just transmit, and I will do my best. Nothing is guaranteed. I'm not going to give you connection. I'm not going to give you. Uh, I'm not going to give you. A I'm not going to allocate bandwidth for you. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Uh, that's why we call it best effort because nothing is guaranteed. I will do my best. Is that means? If the network is not busy, I will get them delivered. But if the network is busy, I'm not going to deliver your message. And you have you you, you have to um, you, you you have you have to consider this, or you have to solve this problem by yourself. I'm not going to solve it for you. The, what I mean is that you can send the best message to me, or you send it packets to me, and I'm not going to deliver it for you because it's first effort, not guaranteed. It's first effort, and then you have to deal with this problem. Okay, and that's what we do in, in the in the layers. So uh, in transport layer, we have error control. If you transmit a message uh, and the message is not delivered, you are going to retransmit again. So yeah, we, we solve this problem. Okay. Anyway, so I just want you to understand our the IP protocol using the internet. It's unreliable. It's connectionless. It's piece for I, you should understand what these terms mean because in network we use these terms all, all the time. You should you should know them. Okay. And again, you should understand this is not. It's, 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 I'm not saying it's a, it's a it's bad one. That's what you should understand because unreal, un, unreliability, uh, I'm going to solve it in the upper layer. So it's, it's, uh, you got what I'm saying? So yes, it does. we don't have here reliability, but I'm going to solve it in the upper layer. Anyway, so uh, any questions? Okay, so now we have, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give you more details about the IP addresses. Uh, so for IP addresses, uh, now we, we have IP version seven. Uh, so version four, I'm sleeping. So we have IP IP six. Okay. So we, uh, so we have here two versions of IP IP four and six. Uh, still still I think so. This is the future one IP version version six. But still I think many computers are still using IP version four. So we have two two versions of the of of the IPs. Okay. Uh, the IP version four is actually thirty two bits. So the size of your IP, the IP address, the size of the IP address is actually 32 bits, four, four bytes, okay? Global identifier. And 32 bits. So how many computers I can have if it's 32 bits? You, yes, it's, you know, from the, from the binary numbers, that means you can have up to uh, two to the power of thir 32, okay? Which is, I think it's around 4 billion computers, something like, it's not too many. Yeah, 4, four billion addresses. Okay, it's it, and this was actually because uh, in the past it was okay because we didn't have too many computers, uh, but now you can. By the way, when I say computer, I don't I don't only mean uh, laptop. So your your uh, uh, smartphone for sure. It's a computer. It has an IP. Okay, not only that. When you have like a small microcontroller, this is small microcontroller is connected to the internet. It has an IP as well. Do you get what I'm saying? So now we are talking about Internet of Things, IoT. Everything is connected to the Internet. That means we, we, we need too many addresses. It's not enough now. Four, four billion are not enough anymore. That's why, and this was the main motivation to move forward to create what we call IB version 6. In IB version 6, we increased the size of the identifier to 128 so that we can have too many computers connected to internet, the Internet, uh, too many addresses, okay? But here for, I'm going to focus here in these slides, it's about, uh, I'm going to focus here on uh, IB version 4, which is actually 30, 32 bits. But anyway, this is not big difference because it's the same idea, but I'm going to focus on 32 bits. Okay. So first of all here, um, okay. So this is the format of the IB address. So here we put a, num uh, a number, this X, Y, uh, W, Z, these are numbers, okay, D decimal numbers. So we have a number, dot, number, dot, dump, number, and then dot, something like that. 128.11.3.31, okay? So for numbers, every and the separation between this number, we, we use dot. This is the format 
of any IP address for any computer. Is that, is that, is that okay? But you have to understand every number here is actually eight bits. So as you see here, every, every number here is actually eight bits. Okay? So this one is eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, eight bits. In total, you have 32 bits. Make sense? Any questions? And because, as you also you know from a digital, from digital system, because this one is eight bits, this, so it has to be a number from zero until 255. So if you have eight zeros, so this is zero. If you have eight ones, so this is 255. Is that okay? So always, so again, you have four numbers. Every number is actually between zero and 255, and we write it this way. Is that okay? Any questions? Also, you should understand, if I write this way, 129, 11, 11, 235, okay? You should understand this is in binary, it has to be this way. So this is 129 in binary, this is 11 in binary, 11 in binary, uh, 239 in binary, okay? Any questions? Okay. So now, again, the reason I'm teaching this part, I just want you to more understand the idea of hierarchy, how we have hierarchy here, okay? So this is not a flat number. It's not a flat number. It's not, uh, why it's not a flat number? Because it has a certain structure. What do you mean by a certain structure? I mean, as you see here, this ID address, it has to actually two parts. One part for the lead ID. One part for identify for the network, network, another identify for the exact computer inside this network. Okay. For example, uh, so so this number is not a flat number. For example, if this one here for the network and this th this three here for the host ID, for example. Okay. So there is one part. I'm going to tell you which part exactly because it's. Uh, I'm going to give you more details. But there is one part for the network. So the network itself, it has an address, okay? And the other part here for the host inside this network. That is why you can notice all IPs for any network, like for example, if you look at Qatar University, if you look at all the IPs in Qatar University, you will, feel, you will find there is one part common between all of them, what I'm saying? So as I told you, you should understand the internet, it's network of networks. We have different networks, right? Network of networks. Every network, Every network has an ID number, unique number, okay? Inside this network, you have here host. Host means uh, every, every computer in this network has its own ID here inside this one. Any questions? So that means, for example, as just an example, if 128 here is the network ID, okay? So that means as a host, host IDs here can be our uh, from 0 0.0.0, .0, for example, until 255.255.255, .255, okay? All these numbers from here, all this range of addresses, okay? That means this, this network has uh, addresses 128. This part is common. This is the main part. This part is common for all, all, all computers in this network. And then you change this one from 0, 0, 0, 4, four zeros until 251.251.251.251, okay? You'll understand why, why you omit it this way for sure, okay? Any questions? And you, maybe you don't need to wait until you understand why I made this way. I made this way because the outside world, the outside world will see me as a network as only one, as 128. You understand what I'm saying? I'm using only one address. So anything, so the same example I told you, if, if, I, if I want to run my letters, I look at the front of Saudi Arabia, so it has to go this way. Wait, it has to go this way. You got, you got what I'm saying? So here, it's exactly the same thing. So the whole network, which has, uh, this network has many computers here, this, the, uh, the outside wallet will, will see me as 128. I don't care about the details. Anything, 128, it has to go this way. 128, it has to go to this way. That's why, we we can, route routers tables can be very small. You get what I'm saying? Because in the routing table, I'm not gonna write all the hostess. I'm not gonna write all the addresses in the routing table. In the routing table, I'm gonna write anything. One twenty eight has to go this way. That's it. 
Look at what I'm saying. That's why when I receive IB, I'm going to only look at one part. And then I want, yeah, want to, I don't care about the other ones. Okay. Any questions? This is hierarchy. That's why you can see here hierarchy. And again, we are in bad need for this hierarchy because we have billions of computers. How, 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 can, how can we do it if we don't have this kind of hierarchy? It's going to, routing table are going to be too complicated for sure. Okay. Also, this I, the IP is here. We we divide them into classes. Okay, so uh, for every IP, we div we divide them into classes. We have class A, B, C, D, and and E. Okay, uh, usually class A, A, B, C are available for organization. That's usually what we do. D and E are used for special purposes. Okay, uh, like multicast or something like that. So uh, we're going to focus on A, B, and C. Okay, so if if you have an IB address, how can you know what class uh, this IB address has? For example, as you see here, in class A, it's actually if the first bit here is zero, so this is class A. If it is one zero, so this is class B. If the first bit here one one zero, so this is class C. Is that okay? And then after that, you have a network and you have host here. Sometimes we add these, these two together and we call it a network. So here you can, again, what I'm saying, I'm going to divide the IBs addresses into classes. That's what I said, okay? Still, every IB has two levels, network and host. Host inside the network. Any questions? Okay. So here, if... If this computer is class A, number one, the first bit has to be zero. This is number one. Number two, the network size here is going to be actually one byte. I'm going to take, I'm going to fill this bit inside the network. Okay. So everything is going to be one byte. So the first byte can tell me what is, what is the network ID, the first byte, as you see here. Okay. For class B, okay, class B, you have here number one. The first two bits should be one and zero, okay? And then the network size here, the network ID should be here two bytes, 16 bits, 14 bytes, two bytes. So the first two bytes is gonna tell me what is the network because that's, that's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a lot of questions about this one, a lot of questions. I'm gonna give you IB like this one, okay? This is an IB. Inside this IB, there is network ID, host ID. How can you extract them? How can you split? This is the host and this is the network, okay? So that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying, if it is for the network, if it is class A, so it's the first byte. If it is class B, so actually it is two bytes. If it is class C, class C is gonna be three bytes. This is for the network. I'm gonna use the first three bytes for, for the network, okay? So again, uh, if I give you address, and you, you want to know if it's class A or B or C, there are two ways to do that. The first way, as you see here, I can look at the last bit. If the last bit is zero, it is A. If the last bit is two bits, one zero, is B. If the last three bits, one one zero, it should be class C. Is that okay? There is another way, two ways. You can do this way. The problem with this way, you have to convert the number to binary. So if I give you a number, you have to convert to at least the last byte. You have to convert the last byte to binary to see if it's zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, okay? But also there is another way. If you have here a byte and this byte start, start by zero, so actually this byte has to be a number from zero to 127. In order to start any number, any byte that start with zero, so actually, so there is another way. So as the other way here, I don't need to convert these numbers. If, for example, if you give you any address, you don't need to convert these numbers to binary. You can just look at the last byte here. If this the last byte is between 0 and 127, so actually it has to be class A. Why? Because the last bit is 0. Same thing, you can only look at the last byte if it is between 128 to 191, so it has to be class B. Or or uh, uh, it's the same thing, it's going to be half 10. Same thing here, between 192 to uh, uh, 223, so it's actually class C. Okay, any questions? So if I give you an IB and I ask what is the class of this IB, simply what you have to do, either you convert the last byte to binary and then look here at the, these bits, or you can see the last byte in which range this is number one. Number two, 
once you know the class, once you know the class, you can simply, you can, you can know how big is the network, network ID. What I'm saying? If this class A, so network ID is only the last byte. Okay. If if this class P, so the network ID is going to be two bytes. If this class C is going to be four bytes. Any questions? Okay. Let's have some some very simple example. So here in this this very simple example, if I give you like an IB IB like this one, I I tell you what is the class of this one. Very simple. I'm going to look at this bit, the last bit here. The most significant bit, this bit is zero, so it's class A. Very simple, right? In this one here, this one here, okay? What is the class of this one? You can do one of two things, as I told you. You can take the last byte here, and you can convert it to binary. And then you can you can look here, the last, the last two bits are one zero, one zero here. So it has to be class P. Or, or 134, if you look at the table here, you can find 134 is located here in this room. So it's, it's going to be B. Okay, same thing for this one is going to be C because 220 in the range of, of C. Okay, or you can look at this one, 110. Any questions? C is three Which one, sorry? C. Ah, sorry, it's, it's three bytes. Uh, okay. Because four bytes means it means we don't have a host. Everything is just a little, you are right. So here is going to be only one byte or two bytes or three bytes. The other thing here, here I can ask you here in addition, Okay, so this can be in a quiz or an exam or something like that. I can give you the IB, IB address and I tell you what is the class of this one, this number one. Number two, number two, I can tell you what is the network ID and what is the host ID, okay? So very simple, if it is class A, the network ID is only one byte. So here, for example, this one is class A, so this is the network ID, okay? And this is actually the host ID. Okay, and the second one, 134, so class P should be two, right? So it's gonna, I'm gonna take two. This one, I'm gonna take three. So this is the network ID, and this is the host ID. It's enough for today. Let's take that in this for you. Don't share the food. It's a haram or a Ramadan. Huh? Can you sit here or next? Huh?
حاجه <تصفيق> 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 Think the only problem you had in a predictive complex team. Hmm? No, the last. No. Here it is in Bengals. Complex team here. دي كده ريليتد للباندوس خد بالك ريليتد للباندوس بمعنى لو في ايرور انا هبعت ذا هول ويندو لكن في الثانيه دي اكزيبس ايرور انا هبعت بوينت فريم فقط ماشي لا ده دي ريليتد للباندوس كومبلكس مينز هعمل مور اوبريشن لا دي لو هل انت عندك مور تايمرز هل هل ذيس وان ذيس وان مور كومبليكيتد لان ذيس وان يو هاف تو كيب تراك اوف ايفري فريم لكن ذيس وان يو دونت نيد تو كيب تراك اوف ايفري فريم الا انت تبعتش كل واحد كلهم لكن دي يو هاف تو كيب تراك اوف ايفري ثينج فالسوفت وير او البروجرام مور كومبليكيت وبعدين اولويز بص انا يعني انا هقول لك على حاجه هو اولويز طالما في امبروفمنت هيبقى مور كومبلكس اخدت اصل انا يعني فاهمه يعني هو دايما انا بكومبليكيت الحاجه عشان اخد منها بينفيت بس اه بالنسبه لاوفيس اوتس اف يو هاف اي كوشنز انت ممكن تبعتي لي ايميل احنا ممكن نعمل زوم ميتنج خد بالك تبعت لي بس ايميل وممكن سيت زوم ميتنج فانسر لوك كوشنز Thank you. 